Today's Saturday, May 29th, 2021. Another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. I am your host, Alex. Find us online, Instagram, that's Corporate Cowboys. You could also subscribe to the Patreon, that's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. If you want to send a donation or send a letter, some kind of communication, you can do that. P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95742. Today's episode is uh, going to be about power tripping. Power tripping and why does power feel so good? Why is, is the allure, the prospect of obtaining power so appealing? What cause, what, what is, what is it about power that changes a person that causes a person to reprioritize their mode of living in order to maintain, there you go, maintain their position in life that has provided them with a certain amount of power. Why? Why fight for power? I think power in itself is a raw material for control. If we were if we were going to put it on uh, and categorize it as a resource, it's raw material. Power is raw material for control. And um you could further you could further uh separate that out into physical power, mental power, and those in themselves would have different names like strength, intelligence. Ultimately though, it's it, it is power. A raw material in and of itself. Where if it's exercised, if it's applied with intent, with the intention of of a particular result, it becomes a form of control. For some, this control is exerted, it's exercised on acquiring other raw materials, on acquiring other resources, such as time, money and it could also be exercised on people and having them do what you want much like a manager a manager is meant to save time meant to save money by exercising some power and it looks like authority, so like they have a form of authority that has that has uh, imbued them with power in order to exercise their position as manager, in order to exercise that power in their position and be able to control us, be able to control me as an employee. So I, I end up doing work that they point out and direct me to do. That way, their, their power, more mental than physical in this sense, because they're giving an order. They're not necessarily puppeting me. Like, they're not directly pulling my strings. They're not moving my hands, working my fingers they are able to separate 
the mental power from the physical power. So using their intelligence on what work needs to be done, they're able to separate it and not have to exert any strength. They're not, they're actually beating me to submission in order to get work done. They're not whipping me. They're not, they don't even have to snap their fingers at me if they are capable and professional and diplomatic. If they know how to cut through the bullshit with just words, then their intelligence will carry them further than any amount of physical power. And I think this is true. This is true for a lot of corporate cowboys. Because corporate cowboys, in and of themselves, have an appeal for intelligence. They want what's better. They want the innovation. They, they know that it takes physical strength in order to get work done. But they're always of the school of thought that working smarter allows you to play smarter. Working harder just tires you out. And there are some tasks, there are some jobs that require you to exert a significant amount of physical force, like building a home, building a fence, digging a hole. If you are able to wrangle up additional resources in the form of physical control, so using your power in order to obtain control over more physical power, for example, an employee, then in that case, you would ascend into a managerial position. It doesn't mean you're not working. You might choose to be the type of manager who works shoulder to shoulder with your employee, side by side, both of you in the trenches, doing the work, getting the job done. I've had the pleasure, I've been fortunate to work with managers of that type. And it's a management style it's a, it's a type of manager not every manager not every manager wants to get their hands dirty but they'll make up for it they will more than make up for it in intelligence they will more than make up for it in the type of service they provide by being smarter and working smarter and i'm more than willing to exert the physical strength required for the job to get done if I know management is working smarter. Now the disconnect in that comes from managers who do not work smarter and do not want to work harder. So they want to expend less physical energy and not expend any mental energy. So they don't want to work physically and they don't want to work mentally. They're just there to collect the check and yet lord their position over you as, you know, as lord, lord their position over you from their perceived um, imbuement of authority by gatekeeping what it is that they do. They'll tell you that they're busy, but they really aren't doing shit. Typically, an employee isn't retarded. Typically, a capable corporate cowboy isn't blind to what it takes to be a manager. So, 
corporate cowboys, when they choose to call out these managers, must have a plan of action. They have to, they have, to have a plan in place. Because these managers will still fire at will, will still fire you from your position if you call them out. You have to understand the dynamic between, I have to understand the dynamic between me as the employee, quote unquote, as the contractor as uh, the physical component, as the physical working component to in compared to in comparison to the manager's role in the relationship, which is meant to be um, mental. It's supposed to be mental. If they aren't working next to me, if they aren't side by side, then I can attest, if they were working side by side, then I would be able to attest that the manager is putting forth at least some physical effort. They don't have to be working bell to bell with me. They don't have to be working nine to five right next to me in the, in, in the, uh, in the office right next to mine. But there has to be some degree of uh, physical input for credibility to carry. Their efforts have to be credible. And I have also worked with managers who are out of the office and still get work done. So when they show up in the office, I already know that they have been working. The credibility is there. It's established. The credibility is certain. The power trip comes from those who seek to gatekeep in delegating work and not not thinking ahead. So it's those managers who don't want to physically work and choose not to mentally work and still want to be beholden as a quote-unquote boss. That's the power trip. Man, I I made it sound as, uh, as... as sterile as possible. I thought it was going to be a little more dramatic, but no, that's essentially the power trip. The power trip comes from gatekeeping. And the power trip you can see in many relationships where one person has a perceived authority, authority that isn't even legitimate because, I mean, nobody can control another. You, you see this even in... Uh, in criminal law between police and citizens or civilians where the police have a perceived power of authority they really think they're in control when in actuality they are meant to be professionals they aren't in control it's their managers it's their captains it's the mayor, it's the chief, it's those individuals above them in that group who are in control of the police officers on the street level. So those police officers on the street level are nothing more than customer service representatives. So for them not to act accordingly, for them not to act professionally, for them For them to go straight for their handgun, for them to not know how to de-escalate, for them to know how to, to not know how to talk a person down, 
I mean, there's training and all that. And I suppose the only way to uh, really test yourself is to be exposed to it. But training should never end. The training should never end. And uh, I suppose the want to train, taking the initiative to be a better officer and well, I mean, let's forget about law enforcement now, but taking the initiative to be a better professional requires that one train even off of the clock. It requires you picking up a fucking book on your day off and reading, watching an instructional video on psychology on sociology, on what makes people tick, on what triggers people to act a certain way. And I don't mean trigger in the triggering sense. I mean like psychological prompts to the dialogue that takes place in a relationship of that kind, in a relationship of perceived power, <laughs> the first step, the first step to, um, the first step to professionalism is admitting, is admitting you perceive yourself to be in power, and then knowing that that power is an illusion. It's illusory. So to officialize it, to manifest it, to make it legitimate, it requires you to damn near be a magician. Because if I don't know you, you can flash a badge all you want. You could say you're my manager all you want. You could say, hey, I just got I just got brought in from corporate. I could give two fucks. If you don't have the credibility, if you don't have a proper mode of introduction, if I haven't heard of you, right? Because that all that all goes into, into credibility. You must have you must have that that triage of ethos, pathos, logos. It must be a, it must be apparent. Otherwise, you're just a stranger. Fucking stranger danger. <laughs> you get blasted before you tell me what to do. You think you're really dope. You're liable to get smoked. As in older associate once told me you can't you can't ever be dope enough you just can't believe you're dope you have to let folks know you can't you can't let them have a hit upon first meeting you unless circumstances require it to be so unless you know the introduction is going to be a hot one otherwise keep it professional keep it diplomatic and in making introductions that's another uh that's a whole other episode but this one was just about power tripping and what goes behind it it's honestly just folks who want to be in control the root, the root of all evil, the root of power tripping is the want for control. And again, control is an illusion. Control is an illusion. But again, that's why, um, that's why so many individuals fall victim to it. Both the controllers and the controllees. Because illusions are attractive, illusions are appealing, illusions are easy. 
illusions. When when you don't understand the illusion, it's easy to just believe you've been duped. It's easy it's easy to believe in magic when you don't know how the illusion works. You're like, oh well, I guess I guess they got authority over me. I guess I'm gonna get handcuffed. I guess I'll get fucking beaten. You know, I, I guess these folks really uh are just here because they're responding to a call. I wonder who called them or whatever. Like, you, you're just going to believe everything at face value. Yeah, I, I guess I'll, I guess I will have my day in court. I'm not going to get murked on the way to jail or whatever. I guess... <laughs> I guess they've been informed correctly. They're going to just show up and ask for my name and ID and really verify who I am. Like, the call didn't inform them that I'm strapped down with the fucking gat. Right? Right. I guess what they're doing is just. I guess what they're doing is fair. I guess they're only human. <laughs> Fucking illusions. Only human. So when you power trip, you're on a whole other level. You're you're operating on a whole other level. I've power tripped before. I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, it wasn't anything grandiose. I'm sure it was annoying for my employees. I'm sure it was annoying for my subordinates, but that's all it was. It was annoying. I wasn't actually a detriment <laughs> because at the end of the day, it is my team. It's, it's folks that I'm exercising control over. So why would I be anything more than just a little annoying if it if it is all in good fun and of course there is compensation that goes uh there's compensation that comes from my hand in um in acknowledging the fact that my style of management might be abrasive a little abrasive to some might be a little annoying to some of my members to some of my partners so obviously I have to compensate. I have to make their time worthwhile. That's all in being a good manager. And that's all in my management style. So even if I am annoying, even if they do say, wow, Alex is a fucking Nazi. Or he runs this ship like a fucking, like a fucking, uh, <laughs> with an iron fist. It's so that they understand, and it's so that my credibility comes across as moving towards something better. So I might be there physically present, working side by side, by side working shoulder to shoulder with them. But when I'm not there, and the orders I leave behind are of the level of, <laughs> of borderline autistic i need them to be followed in a logical sense not just to the letter but in with logical outcomes then they understand that i'm also putting forth effort mentally in order to have us all work smarter at the end of the day I'm a leader we're supposed to be leading but we don't have just followers I mean there are some who are paid to be followers like that's their bracket and uh they're more than happy with just getting paid to squeeze triggers. But we are also... We are also in the market of creating leaders. Of leading leaders. Otherwise... <laughs> otherwise, what happens when you get clipped? 
you need your management style to carry on. It's like having kids inside of corporate. Except they're associates. And together, we're just on that corporate cowboy shit. Have a nice weekend.